time we're going to talk about the cell cycle. The cell cycle is essentially the life cycle of the cell. And we've already, there's already uh, notes posted for this part, so I'm not going to talk about this anymore. I want to show you a couple really interesting things that we can talk about in AP that we didn't talk about in other classes. Uh, first of all, just a quick review of mitosis is we have basically prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and then over here, telophase. It's the cell, is the nucleus dividing. Okay, and what happens is, in essence, is chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell, and then you see these um, in the book images. You can see this better than here. There are these little stringy things. Those stringy things are called the spindle. At the ends of the spindle are things called the centrioles. So the spindle forms and Holds, holds the chromosomes apart. Okay, the chromosomes had to duplicate. We had to duplicate them in interphase first. In the S phase of the cell cycle, the chromosomes were duplicated. And I mentioned that back in the lecture on um, cell division, the first part. I want to talk about the spindle specifically here and uh, what happens things we've learned that what happens here with the spindle, if I go back to here, okay, as the, as we used to think that these got pulled apart, okay, and they use big terms like can eat a core and stuff like that, but what we've learned is that actually on the, On the centri on the central mirror of the chromosome, here's the chromosome, here's the middle thing called the centromere, there's a little motor protein, kind of like those little walking dudes in the inner life of the cell. That motor protein pac-mans its way, pac-mans its way along the centriole, leaving behind little pieces. So it it sort of munches like Pac-Man down the centriole towards, the, I mean, down the um, spindle towards the centriole, chopping up these little pieces so they can be used later. Another thing we've learned about the cell cycle uh, relatively recently is the name of the proteins. There are proteins that are in charge of mitosis, and one of those proteins is called cyclin. So as the cell is going through the G1 phase and the S phase cycle is pretty low. When it gets to the G2, as the cell keeps growing, the cyclin protein starts to rise. Right here is a checkpoint. The cell sort of decides whether or not the G2 checkpoint to divide. If it can divide, cyclin and cyclin-dependent kinase, CDK, is a protein produced by the cell as it grows. Those two go together. When they go together, that tells the cell to go ahead and divide. MPF is called maturation promoting factor. You don't need to know that. Goes ahead and divide. This goes up and up and up and up through mitosis. Falls down at the end of mitosis. So these things fall apart. And this protein is left over. This enzyme, cyclin-dependent kinase, is left over until more cyclin comes in. That's just one way that the cell cycle is regulated. That's a little bit of detail that would help you on an essay, uh, but it's interesting, I think, if you're into the biochemistry of mycosis. Uh, this slide is about how cells know to divide or not. And one of the labs, one of the experiments they did is they grew cells in a dish. And they found that once they're anchored to the dish surface, they divide. They call that anchorage dependence. They have to be stuck to something. If they're floating in solution, they don't divide. But then they learned that once they formed a single layer, they stop dividing. And they call that density dependent inhibition. In other words, if the cell is touched on all sides, it won't divide. But if they scrape away something, make a gap, 
These cells that are not being touched on all sides divide to fill in the gap. So that's a normal cell. So what happens then is you cut your skin open. This is your skin surface. Here's the cut. These cells right here are not touching anything. That stimulates mycosis. That's pretty cool. Problem with cancer cells, and you can read about this in your textbook if you're just using the notes, I would hesitate to do that. There's a little bit of stuff about cancer in here, and we're going to come back to it in class. Cancer cells do not exhibit anchorage dependence or density dependent inhibition. In other words, they will grow no matter what, even if they're not stuck down. So they're not stuck down and they're floating through your body and they're still dividing. Okay? Now, a brief thing about cancer. We're not going to spend a lot of time on cancer in here. We do an anatomy and physiology class if you're interested in it. I also have a cancer. Um, I can post a lecture I do on that in anatomy and physiology. But just a brief thing here about breast cancer. You have a single cancer cell grows a tumor. Now, a tumor alone is not cancer. Cancer happens as these cancer cells start to spread. And you're like, well, if it's, why is breast cancer so dangerous? Well, they can just cut the breast off. That's true. What makes it so dangerous is that these cells, since they don't exhibit anchorage dependence, they separate off and they can travel through the bloodstream or the lymphatic system and go somewhere else. Now they don't show this here, but they can lie in your liver, or in your lung, or in a kidney, or an ovary. Okay, wherever they end up at, then they start growing there. That's what ends up killing you. So, brief, we'll talk more about cancer with genetics later. So there's a brief overview of just what I would call special things about mitosis for this class.